All right, so here is the plan for this week. Um, one is another Google form. Um, the other two are worksheets. So I'll talk about them a little bit later. Um, and then the new one is a discussion board. Um, that was something that was a little challenging for me in the first week is, you know, I have 120 students and there were comments just like on in a lot of different areas. And it was kind of hard to keep up with all that. And I kept being worried that I was like missing one. So um, I want you guys to check it regularly. I want you to post one original question or comment per week, and then also respond to a classmate, right? And it doesn't have to be someone in your actual class, right? Like, like both of my Algebra 2 sections are merged together in that Google Classroom, all right? So it's kind of an easy five points that you can get either, every week. Um, just make sure you're keeping it school appropriate. All right, so this is our Desmos assignment from last week. Um, I already did click anonymize, so it turned all of your names into famous mathematicians. All right, and it's kind of cool that I can like go through each one and you know see which students got it right or wrong. Right, I can also look at your reflections, um, and then I can also like snapshot a couple of these kind of like a favorite and it'll group them for me together in this snapshots folder. All right, so I put a few of them together. Um, the most were from this one reflection question, right? So what do you look for when you're deciding between linear quadratic or exponential? All right, I'm gonna make this one a little bit bigger, right? These were our notes from week one, right? And so basically this question was like asking you guys to put this in your own words of how you tell the difference between linear, quadratic, and exponential. All right, so you can kind of just take a minute and read some of your classmates' responses. All right, here's a couple more. And I tried to pick like a variety. And then there's the last set for that one. All right, the next Desmos one that I wanted to show you was this screen where you had to write an equation of the function that passed through these orange points, right? So you can see like whichever student did the linear one, you know, forgot to put the x squared to make it quadratic, All right? But all these other students that are kind of close to overlapping those orange points are definitely on the right track with a quadratic. Um, but I thought it was cool too how students did it a little bit different ways, right? Like this top right student put it in standard form, or I guess you could say that's for a text form also. Um, this bottom left student put it in intercept form, right? Because remember, if we go back to our, our graph here, right? The intercepts are negative one and positive one. That's one way of thinking about it. Um, or you could think about it like the first student did and how this whole quadratic graph got shifted down one unit. All right, and then the bottom right student, like maybe they couldn't figure out how to put the exponent in on the computer and that's fine. X times X still works. All right, and then the last two Desmos screens that I wanted to talk about were these last two reflections. Um, one was about Kanaya here thinking that the rule y equals 2 plus 6x will fit that data, all right, and whether she was correct or not. So I thought it was really interesting how kind of split down the middle all of our Algebra 2 students were, right? 17 students thought yes, and 23 thought no. So if I click answer key here, we'll figure out who was correct. All right, so you might not remember what you picked for this one. Um, I think you'd have to log back into Desmos and figure out which famous mathematician name you were assigned. Um, but I could understand why this one's tricky because at first, you know, you're looking at, let's see if I draw on this here, right? First, you might be noticing, all right, well, that point right there, that zero two, that is the y-intercept, right? Which would make sense with that number, right? If it's y equals mx plus b, right? But if you look a little bit closer, right, at the slope, right? If we need a slope of six, that means the y values have to increase by six every time the x value increases by one, right? But the x's that are shown here are actually increasing by two each time. 
making the slope three, not six. So if I scroll down, I can actually take a closer look at which students had correctly said it was no, but maybe also went a little bit further into their explanation, right? So you can see here, Marjorie is saying the slope's three, not six. Um, Emily here is showing that if you take the points in the table and plug it into the equation, that it's not actually going to work. So that's another good strategy. Um, this student heard of really did a nice job explaining um, of kind of like their first thoughts and then how their thinking changed after looking at it again. Um, and I like how they should talk about like two different ways of figuring it out, right? One way is actually like calculating the slope in the table. Um, another way down here is like by just plugging the data points in to check if they work or not, which they don't. All right, and then our last conversation about last week's assignments is this argument between Andrew and Colin. All right, if you're in class seven, you know who I'm talking about. Um, but we've got this graph and we're only really given one quadrant of it. And Andrew's saying it's exponential. Colin is insisting that it's quadratic. So your job was to figure out which student was correct. All right. So again, your responses were kind of all over the place. A lot of you said that there was not enough information. Um, and then nine said exponential, four said quadratic. So if we actually check to see who was right, those of you that said quadratic were actually correct. So even though Colin posted on the Google Classroom that he did not appreciate the last Desmos problem involving his name, I actually made him be the correct one. So if you look down at some of the responses here, of people thinking not enough information, um, as we get up into people choosing Colin or not, right. Here we go. This was my response here. Right? So even though it looks like it could be exponential and it looks like Andrew could be right because it looks like it might have an asymptote, um, if you actually click on the points in the graph, you can actually figure out that if you go out the, the second row that that has the same constant pattern, right? That same second difference for the quadratic, right? So in this case, it's really hard to tell from just looking at the graph. But if you actually like click on points on the graph and look at the data a little bit more closely, you can actually confirm that that second difference is constant. All right, so going back to the new assignments for week two, all right, we already talked about the new discussion board that you're going to make two posts on. We also talked about a new Google form that will be comparing all three models. All right, and that one will be graded for accuracy out of 30 points. All right, and the last assignment for this coming week is there are going to be two worksheets. All right, so I'm going to give you a little worksheet preview of both of them. Um, I actually like copied and pasted, you know, an actual part here from each worksheet. Um, so that we can kind of, you know, go over directions and how to submit. All right. So the first of the two worksheets gives you an option to print out the worksheet and color it. If you don't have a printer at home, not a big deal. What you would do instead is just make a list of these four different models, and then you're going to take the problems in the worksheet and label them under linear or exponential and so on. All right. So if you are printing it out and coloring, what it says is to like choose a color. Let's see. I pick that yellowish orange color there. All right. Linear. So then what I would be doing is just like coloring anything on my page that would be linear. Right. And I actually didn't do the bottom one yet, but that bottom one does not look linear. 
right? So then I would like pick a different color. Let's say I pick blue and I'm going to make, let's say I'm making the neither be blue. All right, so that second one here, we know that's a rational function, right? Because the X is on the bottom, that would have a vertical asymptote because of that domain restriction, right? So that would not be any of those three models, right? So basically that's the plan. If you're gonna print it out and color it, you're kind of just like grouping the four different models. If you're not printing it out and don't feel like coloring, then just make a list and write the problems down from there. All right, the second worksheet is going to get a little bit more in depth and make you think a little bit more. It's also going to bring up some vocab from earlier in the year, like y-intercepts, um, the f of x notation. Um, we can do interval notation for where it says the increase or the decrease. All right, so some of this language might be a little bit different, so let's just kind of go through one of these together. I think this is actually... Um, this is actually one of the ones right from the worksheet. So I'm doing one of them for you. All right. So to determine the function family, right, because that graph looks like it has that horizontal asymptote and that it's growing rapidly, we would say exponential there. All right. For the y-intercept, you're just looking right at the graph there. It looks like it's on what? Negative two, right? So you can list that as zero, negative two. All right, some other of, of the problems might have an equation or a table. So just remember that if you're looking for a y-intercept, you want to plug in zero for x, right? To find a y-intercept, you're always plugging in zero for x. All right, so same thing. For finding f of 2, you could either plug 2 into the equation or look at when x is 2 in the table. But if we are given a graph here, then I want to go to where I want to kind of like go over here to find when x is 2 and then go up to see where it's hitting my graph, right? So that answer would be 4 because that point is 2 comma 4. My apologies for my handwriting here. All right, so f of 2 is equal to 4 because when the x value is 2, the y value is 4. All right, and then as far as the intervals of increase and decrease, Basically, you're just looking at the graph and you're going to give me an interval for when the graph is going up, when it's rising from left to right, or when it's falling for the decrease. All right. So in this case, we don't have a decrease, right? So number five, I can just kind of skip or you can put like NA if you want. Not applicable. applicable. Um, but as far as the increase, right, this is actually increasing like everywhere, right? So as you look from left to right, even if you were to zoom out, it's really increasing everywhere. So we can say that it's increasing from negative infinity to positive infinity, All right? So some of these problems are gonna kind of bring in that old domain and range interval notation um, and that f of x notation as well. All right, so that is it for week two. Make sure that you do all of those assignments by Thursday this week, right? Not Friday. Make sure they're due by Thursday. Uh, and I think I can actually make myself a little smaller here so that you can see all the assignments again, right? So you're already watching this video. Um, you're going to do the Google form, and that is graded for accuracy, 30 points. All right, you're going to have those two worksheets, which you saw the preview of. You don't have to print if you want to just, you know, show your work in your notebook and take a picture of that and upload that to the Google Classroom. That is fine. Just remember that there are two of them. All right, and then the other new thing, which I'm the most excited about is your two posts for the discussion board, right? One original post where you're gonna be asking a question or adding to our class discussion, and then also comment on one other classmate's post. And it doesn't have to be a classmate in your class period. Right, my class three and my class seven algebra twos are all in the same Google Classroom. So feel free to interact with other students that are not even in your class. All right, just make sure we keep it school appropriate. All right, have a good week. Bye.